Okay, bulk of your seatbelts. This one can be a little bit challenging. So um, make sure you're taking good notes. Make sure you practice this a lot. Ask a lot of questions. It's cool, but this really is a way of figuring out to what extent you understand forces. So it's called Atwood Machines. It's named after this guy. I think his name is George Atwood in the 1700s. He's basically a mathematician in England who came up with this way of setting up systems of uh, where you have two or more objects usually connected by a string where there's tension forces involved and we have gravity pulling on part of the system or all of the system. So let's just take a look at how they work. So here I have a table that has a mass, a three kilogram mass resting on the table, a string going over, usually we're gonna to be told it's a massless frictionless pulley, okay? Okay, to a till two kilogram mass that's dangling over here. And then we'll be asked a question, something like this, how fast will a three gram, kilogram mass accelerate across the frictionless table? So, all right. The first thing we got to think about is what are the forces involved? So let's look at each of the objects uh, individually. So on the three kilogram object, if I draw a free body diagram, what I'm going to see is this. I have 30 newtons of mg, and the table is preventing it from sinking down, so the table is applying a 30 newton upward normal force. And then there's a tension force that's going to be pulling it in this direction, right? And I don't know what that is, but I have this tension force here. Now, this tension force is the same as the tension force here. But in this case, that tension force is lifting up on a two kilogram mass. So I have 20 newtons of downward force and an upward tension force. All right, now, if I look at it, which are the unbalanced forces? Well, these forces are balanced. The tension is an internal force. So the only external force acting on the system is the 20 newtons of uh, gravitational force pulling down on this here. So I, I have two approaches to how to solve this. And one of them uses the idea of like, well, I'm going to figure out what the external force is and then use that. Okay, so I'm going to use the whole system approach. This is one I prefer. You'll see it's a lot quicker. Uh, a lot of physics teachers prefer the other one because they think it's more elegant, but I think this one's just quicker, so I, I prefer it. So if I look at this as a whole system, what I notice is this. I'm going to say the sum of the forces, some of the external forces on this system are going to equal the mass of the system times the acceleration of the system. So what I've got is this. <clears throat> the force pulling down on it is 2 kilograms times uh, uh, g. So I've got 20 newtons of external force pulling this way. Now I'm going to set the direction of motion. When I let this go, it's going to move this. I'm calling this the positive direction. All right. Now, <clears throat> that's going to cause the system to accelerate. The system consists of two masses, a larger mass, I'll signify with a big M, and a smaller mass, I'll signify with a little m. So both of these masses are accelerating, not just this one here. So, so this little mg is causing big O and little m, 2 and 3, to accelerate. So basically, 20 newtons uh, equals 2 plus 3, or 3 plus 2, sorry, uh, times a. So a would be 4 meters per second squared. Now I know how fast the system is accelerating. And with that, I can then figure out what the tension force is. However, here's another way of doing it, okay? The other way is using the two-object approach. And this is what most physics books will show you to do, and it, it works just fine. It's just, as you can see, it just takes a little bit longer to get where you're getting. So I say, all right, look, the sum of the forces equals ma, got it. All right, so if I look for this one here, what I know is that these forces are balanced, so I can ignore them. I just know that the, the F equals ma for this one, the only F acting on it that's going to cause motion is the tension force. So tension equals three kilograms times a. Now that's, that's it for this one here. Now we go to this one here. The sum of the forces on this one is going to let this one accelerate this way. So what I'm going to say then is mg, I'm going to call it the positive direction. Now tension in this case is acting in the, in the, the negative direction. It's, it's working against it. So I'm going to say minus t equals this mass times acceleration. So 2 times 10 is 20 minus t equals 2 kilograms accelerated at a. So then I'd say, well, if I solve this for t, I'd see that t is equal to 20 minus 2a. Now that I have this, I can put it up here because I know what the tension force equals. So now I can say, well, 3a is equal to the tension force 20 minus 2a. And when I solve it, again, I get 4 meters per second squared. Two approaches to solving this. You can see, I think the other the whole system approach is a little bit quicker. Uh, but I think some phys 
teachers like this because it forces you to think about the fact that the tension force is the same on both objects, right? Now, <clears throat> what if I have this question? What is the tension force on the string as the two kilogram mass falls towards the floor? You are going to get asked this question on the test, on, on my test and on the AP physics test. This is such a common physics question because it, it kind of gets at the heart of do you understand what's going on here? So here's the thing, think about this. This object is accelerating towards the floor, right? At, at, at we already found out it's accelerating at four meters per second squared. Well, if, if I cut the string, it would have been accelerating at 10 meters per second squared, but it's only accelerating at four. So based on that, I should be able to figure out what this tension force is. So if I do a free body diagram, I'm going to get this. I would say, well, this is being pulled down with mg and it's being pulled up with t. Now the sum of those forces are going to be t plus 20 equals two kilograms accelerate, as we saw before, at four. You've got to solve this before you can find the tension force. You have to know the acceleration of the system first. And keep in mind, the whole system is accelerating at four. I could do this over here too and get the same thing. Okay, uh, so therefore I go, well, all right. Uh, in this case, uh, if I solve this, that's eight. I'm going to subtract 20. I get negative 12. I could have done it this way. I could have said it probably would have been easier actually to say, well, I got three kilogram mass. I know it's accelerating at four. So three times four, and there's only one force acting on that one is going to equal positive 12 because in this case, T is, is acting in the direction of the system's motion. Okay. So the, the, the thing that bothers students is a lot of times they want to go, it's equal to 20. Well, if it was equal to 20, this thing wouldn't be accelerating. Uh, and, and, you know, you can't really solve this until you know the acceleration of the system. Well, let's, let's look at this. What would the tension force of uh, be if I held this three kilogram uh, in, in place and didn't let it move? Well, that means the acceleration of the system is zero. So that means that the two mg this way is got to equal to, to, to the mg going this way. So it's going to have to be equal to 20. So I got two times 10 this way. I have to have two times 10 going that way. Otherwise, this thing would be accelerating. So the tension force is 20. Now, if you recall, before when it was falling, uh, it was only 12. But, when I, but when I, if I hold it in place and don't let it go, it's 20. And as soon as I let go, it goes to 12, right? Because it's starting to accelerate. Now, if there was friction between the table and the three kilogram mass, with well, the tension force T, while it was sliding, increase, decrease, or remain constant with what it would have been uh, if there had been no friction. Remember, when there was no friction, the acceleration uh, was 12. Well, in this case, let's think about it. It would be accelerating more slowly because there'd be another force acting against it. If it's accelerating more slowly, that means that this tension force is keeping this from accelerating as fast. And so this tension force must be greater than what it was before, because that's what it would take to slow this down, because certainly mg didn't change. So if it's accelerating more slowly, that's because t increased. So, so think of it this way, okay? So here we were before, I have mg and I have t, so I have a big acceleration. But if, if, if the tension force goes up, then, then what happens is the acceleration goes down. So when the acceleration gets smaller, I know it means the, t the tension force got greater. All right. <clears throat> Sometimes we're asked to write expressions without numbers. You know, that's common. We always do that. Okay. So, so write an expression for the acceleration of the system in terms of G. You will get asked this on the test, something very similar to this. So I go, well, okay, I'm going to use the whole system approach because that's what I like. I'm going to say the external force acting on this, because I know this 2mg is canceled by this 2mg, the normal force, but I know this one's unbalanced. So this is the force acting on the system. So I'm going to say mg is equal to the total mass of the system, 3m times acceleration. Uh, and so therefore, I'm just going to solve this for A. So that means I'm going to divide both sides by 3m. And look what happens. It's so cool. The m's cancel out, and I just get A is equal to 1 third g, which it'd have to be, right? Because since g is an acceleration, you know, mg is not an acceleration. It's a force. So, so the m had to cancel out, and I get 1 third g. Right expression for t in terms of m and g. Now remember, I can't solve T until I know A. So I would have to do what I did before. I'd have to solve this first and come up with an expression for A. Once I know that A is equal to one third G, then I can solve the tension. Now, perhaps uh, uh, an easier thing to do would be to start with this one over here uh, and just say that 
this tension force is going to equal this mass times acceleration. So I say 2m times 1 third g, so the tension force would be 2 third mg, which is interesting because gravity is mg, so the tension force is 2 thirds mg, which is why it's accelerating at 1 third g. Uh, but I could also do it the other way. I could come over here and I could say, okay, well, I have the tension force, I have mg, uh, and I want to know what, what the tension force is. So if I add these two together, it's going to equal this mass times this acceleration, which gives me one third mg. And then I'm going to subtract mg from that. So I'm going to get negative two thirds mg. And notice the tension forces are equal to each other and pointing in opposite directions. This is positive because it's the direction of motion. And this is negative because it's acting in the opposite direction, but with the same magnitude. Now, those are tricky enough, but now when I have things that are on either side of a pulley, which is mostly what Mr. Atwood did, it's a little bit trickier here. So now I've got a string is attached to two, two kilogram masses placed over a pulley shown. What is the tension force on the string? The answer, my friends, is not 40. A lot of kids are like, wait a second, it's pulled 20 this way and 20 this way. There, it must be 40. It can't be because if it was 40, this is being pulled down with 20. If this was 40, this would be accelerating upwards. But then this would be 40, so, th so these would both be accelerating upwards? It makes no sense. The tension force is the same on both of them. And the tension force is equal to, the easiest way is just to, to isolate one side of the system and say, okay, I've got 20 newtons pulling this way. So if this is not accelerating, and it would not be accelerating because the, there's, the net force is equal on both sides, this would also have to be 20. All right. Well, they're not the same anymore. I made this one lighter and this one is still two. So now what happens? Well, I can just look at it. the first thing I'm going to look at and say, you know what? If you let this thing go, it's going to go this way, right? This one's going to fold, fall down. This one's going to go up. So I'm going to set this direction as my positive direction. And I'm going to say the sum of the forces on the system is going to cause the mass of the system to accelerate as some value that I'm going to calculate. So let's just try this now. I'm calling this positive. So this, the mg here is positive. And, and therefore, uh, what, what's going to happen is, is this is basically pulling the opposite way. This is working against it. I know it's, it's pointing the same way, but if you think about it, it's basically pulling upward on the string, okay? So, so, so this, is, it, it, this is working against it. So I'm going to make that negative 10. And, and then this equals the mass of the system, which is 3. So 3 kilograms. And then when I solve it, I get uh, one-third, basically, 33.3 meters per second square, 3.33 right? meters per second square. I hope you can help me over here with the helicopter. Oh, he did it. And then he asked you, what's the tension on the string? Again, I can't find the tension until I know the acceleration, but I just saw for the acceleration and found it was 3.33 meters per second squared. So then anytime I try to find the tension, instead of using the whole system approach, I just use one side of it. So I'm going to use this side of it. I'm going to say, all right, well, over here, here's what I know. I've got the tension force of 20, I'm sorry, I've got the mg of 20, and an unknown tension force. So when I add those together, the sum of those is equal to this mass times the acceleration of this mass, and the whole system is accelerating at this rate. So two times this is equal to 20 newtons down plus this negative tension force pulling upwards. And then I just have to solve this. I multiply this, that gives me 6.66. I take away 20 and I get negative 13.4 newtons. Now that means over here, it's equal to positive uh, 13.34 newtons because this is pulling this in a direction that's positive. All right, let's try. We're almost done here. Uh, so what is the tension on the string if I was to hold this one kilogram, if I just put my hand here and keep this one, it just, I'm just going to hold it and not let it move. All right, well, if you think about it, this here is not moving. So the tension force here, I've got 20 down and therefore it's not extended, so I must have 20 up. But if I put my hand on the other side and held on to the two kilogram mass, what would the tension on the string be? Well, now the tension on the string only has to be equal to, to mg here, so it had to be equal to 10. I want to express the acceleration in terms of g and the tension in terms of m and g. Okay, let's try this here. So uh, let's start with the acceleration. So the sum of the force equals ma. So what I've got is I got three. I'm going to start, make this the positive direction. I got three mg this way, and I'm going to make this negative mg because basically 
this force is pulling in the negative direction, all right? Uh, and that's going to equal the mass of the system, 4MA. So I'll solve that, and what I find is A is equal to 1 half G. Now that I know A, I can find the tension in terms of M and G. So now I'm just going to take one side of it. I'm going to use this side here. I'm going to say I got 3MG this way plus T, which is going to end up negative when I'm all done, equals M, in this case 3M times A, and I found out what A is. So that gives me uh, 3 halves mg minus 3mg, and that's going to give me uh, negative uh, 2 halves mg. I think that's it for this. This no, oh, okay. Oh no, I, I kept going here. I just I can't get enough of it. Okay, here we go. What would be the tension force on each if you prevented the system from moving by holding mass? A. So if I held mass A, what would be the tension on the different parts? So let's start over here. This is pretty easy. Here, this is not moving. This is going to be 3mg. So this tension force has to be 3mg. Now think about this. This tension force is the same string as this one here. So it's got to be the same. So this is also 3mg. Then that brings us to this one here. Now in this case here, I'm going to look at this mass here. Okay, so so this mass here is is equal to mg and then it's being pulled up with 3mg so what is the tension force here so this tension force when added to this one has to equal three so it must be equal to 2mg now i think we're done we're not done <laughs> i just kept going express the magnitude of tension force t1 in terms of m and G if the system were allowed to accelerate freely. Oh, Eric, come on. Okay, well, let's just try this thing. All right, here's what we've got. We've got a system that's accelerating. Uh, let's see, this is 3M, this is 2M, so it's gonna accelerate this way. So I'm gonna say 3MG is the unbalanced force that's accelerating this way. These forces are working against it, so I'm gonna subtract each of those. So I'm gonna add their negative. So minus MG for this one, minus mg for this one, and collectively they all out to 5ms of mass accelerating, so 5ma. So when I solve this, what do I get? I get 1 fifth g. That's how fast it's accelerating. So now that I know how fast it's accelerating, I'm just kind of going to come around and I'm going to look at t1. So I know that this object is accelerating in the upward direction, which we're going to call the, the negative direction. Uh, at, at, uh, uh, at, here we go, at, at one fifth G. So, oh, actually I see, I decided, I decided to make this side positive. It works out the same way. I see I did it the other way. Okay, so I'm gonna say T1 plus negative MG, so I'm gonna call that the negative direction. Oh, that's right, because I did before. So I'm gonna call it negative direction is equal to M times uh, one fifth G. So then, uh, when I solve for T, I'm going to see it is equal to uh, five, six fifths mg, which makes sense because this has to be greater than this. Otherwise, it wouldn't go that way. Now am I done? Now I'm done. Okay, thanks for watching.